would you look at the shape of her abdomen? Okay, we talked about whether it's flat, uh, scaphoid, rounded, obese, protuberant. Okay. Um, what do we do next? So you're going to listen um, in the right lower quadrant first. It's not critical that you start there, but usually the sounds are louder there. So you're going to listen in that quadrant, the right upper quadrant, the left upper quadrant, and then the le uh, left lower quadrant. Um, like I said, some people will just accept active bowel sounds times four. Okay, you, need a, you hear them in all four quadrants. I like to know a little bit more if you can give it to me. So if you hear less than five in a minute, so it's very, I don't, like I said, don't count them. But they're um, very infrequent. I have to wait a long time to hear something. I will call that hypoactive. If I'm getting something, you know, about every five to, um, well, five to 34 times during a minute, which again, I don't necessarily count as a type of judgment, <clears throat> that's normal active. And if I'm hearing constant gurgle, gurgle, snip, clap, whatever, um, that's a hyperactive. It cannot be called absent unless you listen for a full five minutes. Okay. All right, so I've done that. I'm going to do um, a soft palpation. So I use the, the flat part of my fingers and it's a circular motion. You press down kind of moderately, but you're just feeling just if there's anything abnormal underneath there, masses, um, whether there's maybe impacted stool somewhere, um, enlarged organ those kinds of things, but it's going to have to be pretty blatant for, for you to feel it, generally. Um, and then we don't require percussion, we taught that yesterday, but you are not required to do that on the abdominal exam. Um, also, um, with, when we're palpating, we're looking to see whether she's got any tenderness. Watch her face, because sometimes she's not going to tell you. Um, and then while you're palpating, you say, um, you know, where was your last bowel movement? <laughs> and you could ask her what it looked like when it was hard or soft. You could ask her about her bladder habits. Well, you know, when was the last time that you peed? Um, did you have any difficulty that burn or anything like that? Are you uh, peeing very frequently? Um, what color was it? Was it clear, you know, light yellow? Was it dark yellow? Um, those kinds of things. Okay. Um, you can sit up at this point. At this point, I'm pretty sure that she doesn't have any deformities at those extremities because I've just been working with her, you know. But you can go ahead and look, make sure she doesn't have any, have any broken bones where she's bent in the wrong places, whether she's got any, um, potentially, she could have something, if, you know, something that's not <coughs> aligned properly, if there's a fracture that didn't heal properly or something like that. Um, so you want to do that. Gait and balance, um, you can do this in the beginning when you walk in with your client. And say, I, you know, when she walked in, I observed her gait, and it was even. Um, there was no uh, staggering. There was no limping. Um, it was she was balanced. The other thing you can do for balance is have the person stand with their feet together and see if they can maintain it. If they close their eyes, then you can maintain it without too much swaying back and forth. That's great. If they